Well, this was definitely not what I predicted. <laughs> What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel, and welcome to my round of 12 predictions video. I said this, that I said that I was going to do this as soon as Bristol was over. Well, here we are, about to do my round of 12 predictions, and let me say, I was not expecting this at all. I mean, I was not expecting that this was going to happen. Like, I was completely wrong the first time. So, in case you're wondering, you can take a look at the round of 12 here. I got three wrong. <laughs> I got three completely wrong. Because I predicted that Byron, Bristow, and Sindrick will be eliminated from the round of 12. And I got them completely wrong. <laughs> and I did say I was going, I predicted Austin Dillon to be out. So I, I'm, it ended up becoming true. So I wasn't wrong there. But, um. What I truly did not expect, though, was getting Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, and Tyler Reddick completely wrong. As I predicted that those three will easily make it on through to the next round. And I was, co I was completely wrong. Like, I was flabbergasted that I ended up getting those three completely wrong. And with those three getting out, I did not expect them to get eliminated so soon. But yeah, here we are in the round of 12, and this is who I think will make it in into the third round of the playoffs in the round of 8. Alright, so of course, let's get started with the first race <clears throat> that is going to be taking place in the round of 12, Texas Motor Speedway. Now, although this year, Texas Motor Speedway did not have an official cup race, it was held at, um, for the All-Star race, which ended up being a complete disaster. But, um, we're going to be going to Texas Motor Speedway for an actual points paying race. And a lot, a lot of stuff can happen, a lot of championship implications can happen again, just like what we saw in Kansas and Bristol, and Darlington, all three races in the round of 16. So, let's go ahead and, um, get my prediction vid predictions video started. Alright, so Texas Motor Speedway will have its first ever points paying race uh, this weekend in the round of 12 to start off the second round of the playoffs. And right now, I think I got my big eye on Danny Hamlin currently right now. Like, Danny Hamlin right now has had three wins at Texas Motor Speedway, almost won the All-Star race um, the last time that we were at Texas Motor Speedway. Although he doesn't have any polls, but he does have 7 top 5s and 14 top 10s. Now, although we haven't seen Danny Hamlin have that much success in um, the season currently right now, his last win came at the Coca-Cola 600, where actually it was supposed to be Pocono, but... Yeah, some stuff happened that we don't, that my friends do not like talking about, but... Uh, yeah. So technically his last win would have been Pocono, but his last official win in like you know in his in his in his database was the Coca-Cola 600 back in May. So although Denny Hamlin hasn't had that much success, he's still a pretty dominant driver. But I'm not putting Denny Hamlin into the next round with this win at Texas Motor Speedway, because here's why. Although Kevin Harvick was eliminated in the round of 16, I think he's going to get it done at Texas Motor Speedway. Same amount of wins as Danny Hamlin for Kevin Harvick, but he has more top 5s and top 10s than Danny Hamlin, as Kevin Harvick has 13 top 5s and 24 top 10s at this track. So, I think that the fourth non-playoff driver that will win in the playoffs will be Kevin Harvick. I'm seeing Kevin Harvick gonna win. I'm seeing Kevin Harvick winning at um, Texas Motor Speedway next, uh, next week, and I would not be surprised if he if he becomes the fourth non-playoff driver to win in the last 12 playoffs. So yeah, that was a bit of a bold move for me, and um, 
Talladega, of course, is going to be the next topic, and of course, I am going to be doing a bold prediction here. Anything can happen at Talladega. I mean, like, there, there's so much chaos, like, you can't even process all of it in your mind. So you cannot expect what will happen at, um, at Talladega, because anything can happen at that time. So, for Talladega, I'm thinking probably another non-playoff driver will win at Talladega. But if I want to if I want to put someone that is in the playoffs to win at Talladega, it will more than likely be Ryan Blaney. Ryan Blaney has won like I think like the two of the last five Talladega races. He won two of them back to back in the 2019 fall race and the 2020 spring race, both in photo finishes as a matter of fact. He didn't win in 2021, and he didn't win the races. He didn't, he didn't win the races in 2021, and he didn't win um, the last race um, at uh, Talladega. But if I were to choose a playoff driver to be in the playoffs, I would definitely choose Ryan Blaney. I think Ryan Blaney does have a shot of making it in and getting his fi and finally getting his first ever points paying race at tw of 2022. He does have a win, but that was a non 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 points race, which is the NASCAR uh, All Star race at Texas Motor Speedway. But I think he will finally get that first inaugural win of the season at Talladega Super Speedway. I have very high hopes for Ryan Blaney since he's really good at Super Speedway races. As a matter of fact, he's won three three playoff races in the last three in the last two years. So I'm definitely seeing Ryan Blaney making it into the next round with his win at Talladega. And now, the biggest one, the biggest race, Charlotte Roval. Whew, I don't know what to expect for the Charlotte Roval. Anything can happen at Charlotte Roval three weeks from now. An underdog can win it. And a, like either a playoff driver or even an underdog can get it done at Charlotte Motor Speedway. If I would have picked the playoff driver to win at Charlotte Mobile, it will definitely be Kyle Larson, and I would definitely choose Chase Elliott. Although we only race in the Charlotte Mobile only four times, Chase Elliott has the most with two. Kyle Larson won the latest race at the Charlotte Mobile, and Ryan Blaney won the inaugural race at 2018 in the Charlotte Mobile with Jimmy Johnson and Martin Truex Jr. battling out on the final lap. Jimmy Johnson spins out and takes out Martin Truex Jr. out on the final lap on the final turn. And that gave Ryan Blaney an opportunity to pass both of them and get that first win up at Charlotte Mobile. So, I would definitely see Chase Elliott winning at the Charlotte Mobile. Um, since, of course, he's really good at road courses. As a matter of fact, I don't think he's actually won a road course this year. I mean, all of his wins came from came from intermediate racetracks. He's won at Dover, that was his first race. He's won at Nashville, I believe. And the third race, I... I think he, he won in Atlanta. Yeah, he won the, the fall race in Atlanta and Pocono even though Denny Hamlin should have won that race. So, none of his wins this year came at road courses. But, in the last, like, I don't know, ever since his first win in 2018, he's pretty much won, like, at, at, a, at a road course pretty much every single year. And, of course, this is going to be the last race, the last road course race of the season at, at the Charlotte Mobile. So, I think Jay Selle will definitely, um win at the Charlotte Rover again for the third time in his career. Now, let's let's see who I think will be eliminated from the round of eight. <sighs> this is going to be a tough one. And I'm. this is pretty much going to be, like, this is going to be probably the boldest prediction I think I'm ever going to make. And you'll see why. So, I think the obvious one that I'm going to go first is Danny Hamlin. I'm obviously seeing him moving on into the round of eight. Of course, I'm going to put Kyle Larson in as well. And, whew, this is gonna be pretty tough. So, let me see who I think will make it in. I guess I'll put Ross Chastain in. I mean, like, Ross Chastain has not, I have not seen winning speed out of that car for a while, but I do see him finding a way to get into the round of eight. Ooh, and I think I'll put Daniel Suarez in the round of eight. He's shown a lot of consistency. He's been, he was, he was pretty good in the round of 16, as a matter of fact. Although not in Bristol, but pretty much, he's been, 
pretty dominant in the round of 16. He hasn't that, that, he hasn't had that many issues in the round of 16. So I'm, I'm expecting him to move on into the round of eight. And another driver I'm expecting to see to go in is Christopher Bell, and that will move on into the seventh spot. And I think, ooh, this is gonna be kind of a bold prediction, but. I'm gonna put Alex Bowman into the round of eight. Alex Bowman, uh, he almost actually got it done at Kansas. Not that he 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 almost got it done at Kansas. He was pretty good at Kansas Motors. He was pretty good at Kansas. He ha actually had a shot of winning that race. Although Texas Talladega and Charlotte have not been the, his best tracks, I think Alex Bowman will somehow find a way of making it into the next round. And that's who I think will make it into the round of eight. And we have some big sh we we don't have a lot of big uh, surprises. Austin Sindra, Chase Bristol, William Byron. I don't expect them to move on into the round of eight. Of course, they have not shown any consistency whatsoever. And the big reason why I put Joey Logano out is because I have not seen winning speed out of that car whatsoever. He only scored one top five ever in, in the round of 16, and he finished like 17th at Kansas and secured a DNF at Bristol. I'm just not seeing Logano making make further, further on into the round. I just don't. So if Joey Logano somehow, like, you know, makes it into the round of eight, good for him. But I do not see Joey Logano making it into the round of eight because I have not seen Wayne Speed out of that car whatsoever. But who knows? He may find himself to find some consistency at Talladega because that's pretty much one of his best tracks. So he can prove me wrong there, but um, but in the Geico 500, he was like, he was kind of close to winning, but he got wrecked out at Talladega. So anything can happen at Talladega, like I said. But who knows, Joey Lodal can prove me wrong. And um, my round of 8 predictions can become like how I predicted my, my round of 12 predictions. So who knows? Everybody can prove me wrong. I we just gotta see what will happen in the round of twelve because I know it's gonna be a doozy. And that's pretty much all I predicted for for the round of eight. This is probably the boldest prediction I think I've ever made. Like, I don't think I've ever made a prediction this bold before. So that's pretty much like I I might get a lot of hate for this, but that's who I think I'm making it into the round of eight. So that's gonna do it for this predictions video. Like I said before, and like like I said before in the round of 16, as soon as Bristol was over, I was gonna do the round of 12 predictions, and I'm gonna do the same thing for the Charlotte Robo. Once that is over, and once the round of eight is set, I will make my championship four predictions. And for the championship four predictions, I, I think I'm just gonna do who I think will get it done and secure the 2022 NASCAR Cup Series Championship. I think that's pretty much how the rest of these predictions videos are going to work. And that's going to do it for this predictions video. So thank you all so much for tuning in. I'll see you guys next time. See you guys later.